this is the overview of an EIP model 545A microwave frequency counter. This uh, particular unit covers 10, 10 Hz to 18 GHz in three bands. Band 1 does 10 Hz to 100 MHz with a 1 Meg input impedance. Band 2 does 10 MHz to 1 GHz with a 50 ohm impedance. And Band 3 does 1 GHz to 18 GHz with a 50 ohm impedance. And on the Band 3, there's a YIG tracking filter which automatically locks onto the strongest signals in your uh, spectrum and will automatically display the frequency. And this also allows you to uh, define a band pass that only receives the uh, signals in a particular range that you've been programmed into the counter. This is useful if you're measuring the output of, like, of a mixer and have a strong local oscillator signal that's overpowering you know, your signal and you can kind of set the YIG tracking filter. There's a, a high and a low uh, frequency limit that only works in the band 3 though. Um, turn the power on. It displays those dashes. That's part of an internal self-test. If there was uh, any errors on the internal memory or any prompt, it would display the hexadecimal address. It goes to all zeros. That means everything's working. Search means it's uh, looking for a signal. Nothing there. The gate, the gate light LED will uh, light when it's receiving a signal. Sample rate is just a standard pot all the way clockwise is your hold, all the way counterclockwise is your uh, maximum sample rate. There is uh, several keypad self-tests you can perform, like if you're a ham fest, you just want to verify that uh, the need, unit does indeed count. Press test, 0 and 1, it should display 200 megahertz, that's an internal VCO, which tests the uh, counting circuits. That doesn't necessarily mean that the unit is operational as uh, doesn't go through the inputs, but it does mean it is, is indeed counting and it's a good sign. Test 02 displays just all the LEDs so you can verify that all your LEDs are working. Now I have a uh, brick oscillator operating at 8.3 gigahertz running through a 10 dB attenuator. Oh, the uh, maximum input is only plus 10 dBm or 10 milliwatts, so you got to kind of watch your uh, power levels. Right now it's in a 1 hertz resolution mode. You can change the resolution pressing the resolution button and then the uh, corresponding number. So uh, 1 hertz resolution is resolution 0. Oops. Resolution 1 is uh, 10 hertz. Resolution 0 is 1 hertz. Resolution 3 is uh, uh, 1 kilohertz. Resolution 4, 10 kilohertz. So there's 500. No. You can go all the way to you know, 1 gigahertz resolution if you wanted. Usually leave it on a resolution to zero for 1 hertz. And uh, one of the really neat features of this particular uh, counter, or it's an option actually, is the power meter. And the power it allows you to uh, measure very accurately your the uh, input power up to 18 gigahertz. Um, I'm going through a 10 dB attenuator, and it allows you to add an offset, you can add in our uh, 10 dB attenuator and it should, uh, oops, yeah it goes, which is a, the brick oscillator is putting on 18 dBm so you can see you know, how accurate, how accurate it is. You do lose um, your resolution on the frequency side but that's a minor problem. This power meter is a much better deal than buying like an HP 432 or something because you don't have to track down the thermistor heads and it gives you a you know, fairly uh, accurate uh, power readings up to um, from negative 30 dBm to plus 10 dBm, which is the range of the band 3. The power meter uh, only works on band 3 mode, so that's one of the drawbacks, but it's not a big deal. Uh, the, uh, internally, there is a 10 MHz temperature compensated crystal oscillator. Um, normally, for accurate, you probably want to use like an external rubidium 10 megahertz uh, reference oscillator if you want to do really, really accurate uh, measurements. But uh, normally, that can just be a leave it. You know, use the internal uh, reference. And it also does a like a math, like a multiplying 
shots and uh, an offset, which is useful if you want to measure like a local oscillator on a spectrum analyzer or something. You can it automatically multiply it by four or six, or you know, and it can do a, the offset too. So if you want to um, program in like a you know 21.4 megahertz offset from a local oscillator or something, you can program it in and it uh, automatically subtract it. Offset. 21.4 megahertz and it automatically subtracts it or adds it I should say you have to do the date you put a negative in front of it I think to uh, negative 21.4 to subtract it. yeah oops let's check 21 negative 21.4 megahertz Oh, there we go, yeah. You put a, a negative in front of the offset if you want to go low. and Otherwise it goes high. And the frequency limit, you can, there's a high and a low. Right now the low frequency limit is 950 megahertz. The high, oops, high frequency limit is 18.5 gigahertz. And so if you, like say, um, I'm measuring the output of a mixer. We have a strong, say, 60 gigahertz local oscillator that's overriding our signal. We can set, and we want to measure our 8.3 gigahertz signal. We go frequency limit, and we could say like 8 gigahertz is our low side. And then on our high side, we can say 9 gigahertz. The uh, high and low frequency limit lights up. And now it's rejecting. The YIG filter is rejecting anything below 8 gigahertz and above 9 gigahertz. It's locking it directly into our signal. Uh, let's see. It's a very, very nice meter. They're per, per, about uh, 25 years old, so they're getting to be, you know, outdated, but you can usually find them really cheap. I got this particular unit for a hundred bucks, you know, it's just an amazing deal for, especially for the experimenter. They're actually a much better deal than uh, the HP meters I think you'll find. Yeah. And uh, a lot easier to track down as uh, most people really don't know about them, so it's definitely something worth checking out.